spots in this game where we played really solid basketball, and I, I think there were parts of this game that we, we didn't play as solid and made some mistakes and kept leaving the door open for a very game, I think, an experienced Colgate team to keep coming back and making runs at us. We were fortunate that we uh, got to the free throw line as many times as we did, 38 times in this game, uh, and shot a decent percentage, While uh, although I'd rather that sh percentage had been higher. Um, so I think all in all, you know, a solid effort, but, you know, certainly some things we can learn learn from and get better at, and we're going to need to do it quickly as we, we turn this around and play in 48 hours. Well, let's start with free throw shooting. Uh, it's not exactly uh, high, uh, but is that, so how frustrating was that for you tonight, and how much emphasis do you put on that in practice? Before? No, we, you know, we, we do. We practice it every day, and we put guys in situations. We, we, we end a lot of practices on the baseline. If we miss, we run. Um, you, you try and be creative in ways to create pressure for your team every day, but there's there's nothing like experience to, to learn from. Uh, and you know, interestingly enough, you know, Yahani has been very solid from the foul line, but missed a bunch in the second half. Tom Vadanovich missed three straight in one opportunity. Uh, you know, and and really, there's the bulk of your misses right there. Is is you know six and three. There's nine missed free throws from two front court guys. Um, so they've got to do a better job, and we've got to do a better job, and we'll, we'll keep working on it every day in practice. Throughout that second half, did you feel like your team had that sense of urgency because Colgate just kept knocking at the door there? Yeah, you, you know, I think the one thing that they do a really good job of is when they, they throw the ball across court and then they drive it really hard on defensive closeouts, and that's a hard thing to do, especially against the kid Newsom, who is very, very talented at that, in that regard. He can drive the ball really hard like he's running downhill. He was hard to contain. I thought he did a really good job, Newsom, in getting in the lane. Conversely, I thought that we did a really, you know, a pretty good job on Tillotson and keeping him out of the lane because he's a very crafty player and uh, an experienced guy who started, all, you know, all all of his college games since he's been a, you know, college basketball player. When we were here last week, you called your team uh, ridiculously young. What was the lesson they learned tonight? Well, uh, leads in college basketball can dissipate rapidly. You know, on a, on a few plays, we we were up 14. We made a couple substitutions, and before we blinked it, went from 14 to four in just a few plays. Um, and we never really got that lead back to double digits again. Um, you know, so that's something to learn from from our guys. You can't take plays off. And I think, you know, a couple of our younger guys thought, well, we're up 14, and this thing is going to grow. It doesn't grow. Leads don't go. They, they, you know, they, they can get away from you very quickly. Uh, and against an experienced team, this is four starters back. You know, and, and Matt has done a really good job with his team at Colgate. Um, you know, I, I think. Uh, what we learned is that you have to, you have to play every minute and you have to play every possession. And uh, it's not as if we haven't learned that already. I mean, I think uh, you know against Radford we needed every we needed every every play to win. And against Longwood, I thought we played a much more even second half than we did tonight. Kind of a quicker turnaround for you just because of the two o'clock start. How do you adjust? I guess just for a couple of hours. Yeah, well, at this point, you know, when you play a game like this, you're kind of relying on what you already do, and, and, and you'll, we'll watch tape tomorrow for a half hour, and we'll go through a scouting report. We'll go on the court for 45 minutes or 50 minutes, but we're going to practice for almost an hour, and, and then we'll let the guys get off their feet. By, by 3 o'clock, we'll be off our feet and uh, hopefully come back and, and play a stronger game on Wednesday. Well, certainly, I think any any team that wins three in a row, it, it's a significant thing, and it doesn't really matter who you're playing. We have such a young team and so many new faces, um, and and so many players that were not, uh, you know, counted on in clutch situations. So to learn, you know, kind of baptism by fire in close games, uh, it's really important to win to win these home games. It's certainly it's certainly important to to compete. Uh, but to play to play well and to finish off plays um, is is really critical if we're going to grow as a team. And I think there's an awful lot of growth left in this team. Um, we're still going through some changes here with with personnel, and at some point, you, you know, we're going to figure out these these minutes uh, for our whole team. Harry Hall left with I think like five minutes left in the first half. Didn't see him at all the rest of the game. Um, are we going to see him on Wednesday? Uh, yeah, I would. I would hope that he would play. Um, I don't think he felt up for playing, but um, you know, I don't. I don't know exactly what it was, but um, you know, we, we, he and I talked very briefly there at halftime. He, um, you know, it's something that we'll. You know, he and I will talk about tomorrow. But 
Uh, he's a competitive guy, and he wants to be out there. And, and uh, Wednesday, he's going to get his chance. So did he take himself out of the game? No, time? I took him out. Yeah, I just didn't think he was m mentally where he was where he was. I thought he was ready when the game started. And then coming in and coming out, he's not used to that. So, uh, But he's going to have to get used to it, as everybody is, you know, when we get our full complement of players back. Did he say anything about how his ankle was feeling? Um, no. How did you feel like he was moving out there? Yeah, I thought he's, he's fine. Huh? Yeah, okay. he'll, play, he'll play on Wednesday. Yeah. That's just really out of necessity right now. Right. That's, that's really what that is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> when, uh, when do you think we're going to see what you guys are playing? Well, I, you know, I think when Andre Nation comes back and Joey, Joey comes back, you know, you know, we have one true point guard on our roster, Ron Carey, and if we run around and play man-to-man -man defense for 40 minutes, three games and five nights, that's, that's not, not really conducive to, to him being at his best. Uh, so when Joey McLean comes back and we can split those minutes a little bit more normally, but right now we're not playing with a scholarship backup at point guard. Um, you know, Joey McLean we think is a really is a really fine player, and I think you see when he's out there, we're you know there's not much of a drop off with Joey. So we need we need Joey McLean to come back and be healthy, um, and when he does, then we'll have more flexibility with how we can play. Your counterpart Colby has been talking about how they started the season on the road playing in different environments. How helpful has it been? For you that you get to play the first five games here at home. Well, I, there's no there's no better teacher than winning experiences. Um, you, you know, because it's such a fragile thing, especially with the, with the young basketball team. You know, the BCS level teams they don't leave their building. They they just don't leave. And by the end of the year, they everybody's talking about what a great season they're having and how much better they've gotten. But at the mid major level, when you've got to leave your building and never really have many opportunities to get home court opportunities or wins, it, it really is a snowball effect. And it can go one of two ways. And, um, you know, this is why we wanted some home games. We think it's important because we think we're really young. And to build on these winning, winning you know, experiences is a, is a really significant deal for us because we didn't have this opportunity last year and our confidence was never very strong. These games are something we're going to, you know, look back on and, and build on for the rest of the year. I did, yeah. Yeah, when, so when Matt Langle was a high school freshman, I, I, I owned a, you know, helped uh, run a basketball camp in South Jersey. We're both from the same area. Uh, and I spent, you know, an entire summer working out with him back when I was a young guy. Um, you know, and then he went on to not just have a good high school career, but he had a, you know, he's in the Hall of Fame at the University of Pennsylvania. He played on some of the best teams at the University of Pennsylvania. He's a three-time All-Ivy player. Um, you know, so he's, it's a friendship we've had for a long time. And, you know, in this business, you know, it's funny how you end up playing your friends in this business. Okay. I this the wrong way. Does that make you feel old? <laughs> <laughs> well, now that he's a college coach, it didn't until he became a college head coach. But, yeah, you know, you know but that's, that's the nature of what we do, you know. And uh, I'm, I am, uh, you know, now recruiting sons of players I either played with or played against. So that, that does make you feel a little older. Thanks, guys. Thanks.